With the new Figma connector in ChatGPT and the latest updates for Figma and Figma Make, we've officially hit a new level in AI for your IUX. Up until this point, building an MVP required juggling multiple AI tools, from planning to designing, then building. But now with these new advancements, I created a new workflow where anyone can plan, design, and build an app with minimal effort. That way you can focus on what really matters, the idea and the user experience. Not only that, I will also show you how to build an app with Liquid Glass UI. Let's dive in. Hi, my name is Jad. In this video, I'm gonna take you through my most efficient process for building an app. We'll start with ChatGPT, then we'll work with the Figma conductor inside ChatGPT. Then we'll move into Figma to prepare the UI components. And finally, we'll bring everything together in Figma Make, which is, by the way, the sponsor of this video. I'll show you how Figma Make tied everything together for me in my process later on in this video. But for now, let's start with the plan. We will start with generating the project brief, then we'll come up with features. After that, we'll generate a flowchart, then we'll move into the UI component. And finally, we will train Figma Make on our own component library. That way you can build a product based on your own components. And of course, each section will include tips for getting the ideal results. Make sure you follow the first four steps in order before getting into the build. That way you will have a structured approach that gives the AI all the context that it needs to build the UI. And the other benefit of following this workflow is that you will be able to direct the project towards your vision. You will be in control at every step of the way, making design decisions and approving the AI output. Okay, follow along. This is going to be super easy. Start by giving your idea to ChatGPT and ask for a concise project brief. And always ask it to ask you questions. It's a really simple and effective way. This is the only prompt that you need to start any project because it adapts to your specific product. And now all you have to do is answer the questions and it will give you a project brief. All right, I answered some of the questions. You don't have to answer everything, just answer the relevant questions that matter to you. And now you have a project brief that you can save to your documentation. Next, we're going to expand on the features. We're going to tell chat to give us a list of features so that we can choose from. It. I simply said, give me a list of features to choose from. Now reply with your set of features. And in the same prompt, ask for a user flow chart for the complete app. And mention that you wanted to create it in Figma. And that way it will go on to generate the flowchart in FigJam. For this to work, make sure that you have Figma connected in your apps. If you go to your settings here and under apps and connectors, make sure you have Figma connected. And now once I hit submit, watch it build the flowchart in Figma right from within ChatGPT. There we go. It's opening up FigJam and it immediately created the full flowchart for me. You can take a look at it now and make sure that everything makes sense. And if you have any changes, you can communicate with ChatGPT from within the canvas here before moving it to Figma. This flowchart is very accurate for me. It really reflects the features that I wanted to include, especially how the AI learns from the feedback button and approves the future AI curated feed. So once you have everything ready here, you can click on open in Figma at the top and then it will open up in Figma so you can save it and edit it. But this will guide your project to know what pages you need to build in the next step. And now let's jump into creating the design system components. And here you have two options. You can either create your own components manually or go to the Figma community where you can find components already built. You can also find iOS 26 UI kit from Apple if you want to build with liquid glass. If you go to the community tab and search for iOS 26 UI kit, you will find the official UI kit created by Apple. You can click open in Figma and then I'll show you how to save the components to use them in Figma Make. So here I copied the file and I have all of these pages with the components already built. We have all of the UI elements that we might need and it's all in component form. And this is essential. If you want to use any other UI kit, make sure that it has components built in. Otherwise you would have to create the components yourself. So if you want to create your own components, you don't even have to use the Apple design system here. You can just create them easily. Make sure that you select the frame tool in Figma. I'll just show you how to create a button, for example. 
I'll change the size here. I'll make it 130 by 48. Here I have a button. I'll call this button. For liquid UI, the corner radius is very high, so it should be pretty much rounded. So the rule here, if the height is 48, the corner radius should be half of that, which is 24. So I'll make it 24 here. And there we go, have a perfect rounding. And then we're gonna go to the effects here. And under the effects, we're gonna select glass. And now here you have a bunch of properties and parameters to control how your glass UI looks like. From refraction to depth and diversion and frost. And if you want to see the effect properly, add a background so that you can see how it interacts with the background. I grab the background here. And now you can see how this button interacts with the background. And you can control the effects here. Then add a text label to the button. Make sure it's white. I'll make it centered. And then I'll click the frame. And I'll make sure that we have a auto layout where the button adapts to the label size. So if you have longer text on the button, it will adapt. I'll select the horizontal flow here and it's on hug. That's good. That means if we expand the button, it will all adapt. Now that we have our liquid button, all you have to do now is convert it into a component. You can hit command option K or right click and say create component. And now we have it in purple, that means it's a component. Once you have components in your file, then you can go into the Assets tab on the left side, and here click on the little Libraries icon at the top, and you can see your document is not published. Publish here, and then you can see the components that will be added to the Publish. And you can notice here that the Export to Figma Make button is not active, because you need to publish your library before you can export it to Figma Make. So hit publish, and this may take a few minutes depending on how big your library is. Once your components are published, you can go back to the same button here at the top and click again on publish. And now you have this export to Figma make button available. Once you click this, it will take a few minutes again to convert it into code. And when it's done, you can go to a Figma make project with your components library built in. Here, if you click go to Figma make, it will start a new project with your library selected. Here it says untitled because I didn't give a name to my design file. But here you can choose from any of the libraries that you have published and it will build your product using that library. So I did the same thing with the iOS 26 uh, UI kit and it's available for me here to work with. I have all of these libraries that I published. So if you want to use the Apple library, all you have to do is copy it to your space and then go to assets and then the libraries button again and here you can publish your whole library and you can see that this library has so many components already built in there's like three or four hundred components inside of this ios 26 library so all you have to do is hit publish then export to figma make and then go to figma make and select your library so here i'm gonna select apple ios 26 that's what i called my library and now to start building the product, we prepared Make with our own component library. Now we're gonna go back to ChatGPT to come up with a good prompt that will allow Figma Make to build the homepage. Okay, now back in ChatGPT, we're gonna tell it to give us the details and instructions for the homepage. Make sure you mention the product type you're designing for because it makes a difference. If you're going for a mobile app, make sure you mention that and mention the styling that you're going for. And then I said, include the elements and components to be included. So we're designing the homepage for a mobile app. And this should get JGPT to give you the exact instructions to give to Figma Make. And this will also be based on your flowchart. So here, ChatGPT knows the details of your full project and it will make sure to cover all your requirements. Okay, give me a lot of details here. And these instructions for liquid glass are important because our components have the UI, but they don't have the interaction with liquid glass. So these instructions will give it details on micro interactions and UI feedback to the user. I'm going to copy everything except for this implementation tips here. I, I don't need to give any tips to Figma make on how to build it. I just want the complete prototype. So I'll copy everything from here. I'll include the goal as well, and Figma Make should understand everything. 
copy everything. And here I'll make sure that my design system is selected. I'll paste everything here. This should give it enough instructions to build the homepage of my UI. And there we go. We have our UI here. Uh, it's gonna look weird because it's a mobile app. So you have to click the mobile view at the top here. And there we go. We have the floating tab bar here and we have the light and dark mode and it's using the same colors as a native uh, iOS app with the styling and the buttons. This is great. If you want to narrow down how your app looks like, because here we gave it a uh, 400 components from the iOS uh, library. But if you want to narrow it down, give it a few components only and it will adapt to them. But this looks great. It looks like a native app with the floating tab bar and everything. And here we have the AI summaries. Now all you have to do to make it work is give it your AI API from OpenAI or Anthropic, and then it will start working with your API to perform the AI tasks inside the app if you have AI features. But anyway, to continue on, now we go back to ChatGPT to ask for more instructions on the next page. You can either follow your flowchart that you created in FigJam or in ChatGPT, just ask it to create the next page. And here in our app, for example, we have the saved page next. So I'll just say, do the same for the saved page. And here I'll paste my new prompt. So I just said, create the saved page and I gave it instructions from ChatGPT. And just to demonstrate, I created a different design system here with liquid glass as well. I'll only give it these elements and I'll try with the same prompt again. I copied the same prompt for the home page and I added the liquid glass design system that I have in my library here. And there we go with the different design system here. Also liquid glass, it gave me a nice UI with the glass effect on the edges of each card and the tab bar, just like the native iOS design. You can play around with your design system and the settings, and it will come up with really cool UIs and interactions inside Figma Make. Another cool feature here is that you can copy your design from Figma Make into your Figma design. That way you can edit it manually and save it for your design documentation and handoff. All you have to do is click this copy design button at the top, hit copy, and then you can paste it inside your design file. Here back in Figma, I can hit paste. And there we go. We have our design straight inside of Figma, which is beautiful. This feature is not available in any other AI coding tool either. Copying the design from an AI coding tool to your Figma account. I love the compatibility here and the layout is perfect. This is the tab bar. You can bring it down here if you want. But it's really cool that you can edit your design in Figma and then bring it back into Figma Make. As a designer, I love this feature. So thank you Figma Make for sponsoring this video. I've been using it since it came out and I even compared it to other AI coding tools in a previous video. And my honest opinion was that I got the best quality UI and interactions in Figma Make. You can check out that video. And now I'm really happy that they're sponsoring my channel. So again, thank you Figma Make. If you've made it this far, I'm going to let you in on a new way to learn for free. I'm starting a new teaching method. Every week, I'll include a learning section in my newsletter where I give you weekly assignments and guide you step by step. This is the best way to learn since we're entering a new phase in product design and I want every subscriber to become a leader in their circle. So if you want to join this new learning method, subscribe to my newsletter. It's completely free. I just want to know that I'm helping as many people as possible. And if you're already subscribed, keep an eye out for my emails. And most importantly, make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube to stay updated. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you next time. Cheers.